Hello PSC FT. Today's topic is introduction of spectrophotometry. Now, in spectrophotometry is a analytical technique which uses spectrophotometer which is an instrument that measures the amount of light absorbed by a sample the liquid sample which is homogeneous in nature spectrophotometric techniques are mostly used to measure the concentration of solutes in a solution by measuring the amount of light that is absorbed by the solution in a cuvid that is a test tube specifically made for the purpose of the purpose of using it in a spectrophotometer placed in the spectrophotometer. Now moving to the objectives of the spectrophotometry. First objective as we have discussed to measure the absorbance of light of the sample at different wavelengths of the light. And second is to find out the unknown concentration of the sample. And third is verification of Beer's Lambert's law. We will discuss all three points and the instrumentation of spectrophotometer one by one. Now the theory. A spectrophotometer is a photometer that can measure the intensity of light as a function of its wavelength. Now, what is wavelength? Now, we can see in this figure, the electromagnetic waves moves like this. And lambda is represented, represented by the wavelength. So the symbol of wavelength is lambda. Now f, small f is equal to frequency. So we can see the one top to another or one bottom to another. The distance between one top to another or one bottom to another is the wavelength. Now, a wavelength is a measurement of the distance between two equal peaks of crest or troughs. So, the crest is this. You can see that this peak is known as crest and this lower peak is known as troughs. Now crest is the high point whereas troughs are the lower low points in a wave and frequency that we called in Hindi Barambarta. So the frequency can be determined by the number of repetitions or number of cycles for each unit time of wavelength. So, repetition of wavelength in a given time is frequency and distance between one peak to another is wavelength. Now we understand the wavelength and frequency. Now single beam and double beam these are the incidence of light. Single beam incidence or double beam incidence are of light are the two major classes of spectrophotometers. Linear range of absorption and Spectral bandwidth measurements are the important features of a spectrophotometer. That is, the absorption of light 
with the change in the spectral bandwidth is measured by the spectrophotometer to measure the intensity of the inc incident light the sample must be removed so that all light can pass through this type of spectrophotometer is usually less expensive and less complicated the single beam instruments are optically simpler and more compact and have dynamic range in a double beam spectrophotometer before it reaches the sample the light source is split into two separate beams one beam passes through the sample and the second one is used for the reference this gives an advantage because the reference reading and the sample reading can take place at the same time so the blank and the sample is measured at a time in single beam spectrophotometer blank and samples are measured at different times in transmission measurements the spectrophotometer quantitatively compares the amount of light passing through the reference and test sample for reflectance it compares the amount of light refracting from the test and reference sample solution so basically it is talking about the blank whatever because the ideal theoretical condition of passing incidence light 100% through a qubit holding blank and what does blank means in this situation or a spectrophotometry the solvent in which the sample is dissolved to make an homogeneous solution make a homogeneous solution the solvent is only present in one qubit and light is passed through it whatever incidence of light passed through it it is taken as 100% so that is the reference sample or blank sample and test sample having the sample the concentration of which sample <coughs> we have to test many spectrophotometers must be calibrated before they start to analyze the sample and the procedure for calibrating spectrophotometer is known as zeroing calibration is done by using reference substance and the absorbencies of all other substances are measured relative to the reference sample as we have discussed percentage transim transmissivity the amount of light transmitted through the substance relative to the initial substance is displayed on the spectrophotometer the major sequence of events in spectrophotometry are as follows first the light source shines through a monochromator and second an output wavelength is selected and beamed at the sample third a fraction of monochromatic light is transmitted through the sample and to the photo detector so this is the 
line diagram of single beam spectrophotometer where there is a light source there is a monochromator which selects the wavelength it works like a prism what does a prism do when incidence of light is focused on it it releases a concentrated single beam light from it so a uh, monochromator or prism is used to focus or release the light of specific wavelength then the aperture is there where incidence of light enters through cuvet this is cuvet or the test tube made of quartz then sample having it then uh, photo resistor resistors the light which is passing through the sample and the amplifier converts the signal from photoresistor to the output that the transmittance of the sample or absorbance of the sample now spectrophotometry deals with visible light near uv and near ir that is infrared to acquire the spectral information quicker in infrared spectrophotometer which use a fourier transform technique and is called fourier transform infrared there are different types of spectrophotometer single beam as we have discussed double beam as we have discussed then there are three lights visible light ultraviolet light and infrared light are used now we should get a view of electromagnetic spectrum now you can see that this is the visible range of light and uh, now we can see that this this is the gamma rays this is the x ray ultraviolet light wavelength then infra infrared rays wavelength is there radar waves microwaves wavelength is there television waves wavelength is there and radio waves wavelength is there visible light wavelength facilitates us to see the color so this is the electromagnetic spectrum and which clarifies the use of light of different wavelength because light electro uh, light travels through electromagnetic radiation means it doesn't need any medium so now single beam we have discussed now double beam we has have discussed that visible light uh, range is 400 to 700 nanometer wavelengths then visible spectrophotometers can use incandescent halogen led or tungsten lamp or combination of these sources depending on the need and accuracy or the quality then plastic glass or quartz cuvets can also be used uh, but ultralight in ultralight ultraviolet light spectroscopy cuvets should be made of quartz
then infrared spectroscopy helps to study different structure of molecules and their vibrations different chemical structure vibrate in different ways due to variation of energy associated with each wavelength for example mid range and near infrared tends to cause rotational vibration and harmonic vibration respectively so this is the advanced form of spectroscopy now we were discussing about the objectives so third objective was verification of beers lambert's law now the theory of this that it is possible for a ray of light to be absorbed by some material and simply pass through others without being affected when a molecule absorbs light energy is transferred from the ray of light to the molecule if the frequency of the electronic and magnetic fields of a ray of light match the frequency at which molecules will vibrate then light will be absorbed so this is the key that we have to understand why incidence of light is used to know the concentration to analyze the concentration if the frequency of electronic and magnetic field of a ray of light matches the frequency at which molecules will vibrate then light will be absorbed if the fre- frequency does not match then the light will pass straight through the through unaltered so this is the basic key principle or reason behind the use of light the electromagnetic radiation in the analysis inert molecules whether solid or liquids appear colored due to the way they modify light illuminating the object or light lighting the object thus different objects absorb some wavelengths and reflect others for example if a white light passes through a yellow solution it absorbs all colors except yellow now the beer's law beer's law state that the light transmitted through a solution changes as an inverse logarithmic relationship to the sample concentration that is transmission is equal to it upon io that it is intensity of light passing through the sample and io intensity of light falling on the sample so it is the transmittance now the optical density optical density is the log io upon it that is intensity of light falling on the sample upon intensity of the light passing through the sample whereas absorbance that is capital a is equal to a b c a is equal to absorptivity constant of the specimen that is the sample b light path length and c the concentration of sample so whatever light is absorbed that reflects the concentration of particular sample so if the percentage transmission is converted to optical density the relation of optical density to concentration is in is shown in the table table has three columns 
कॉन्सेंट्रेशन परसेंटेज ट्रांसमिटेंस एंड ऑप्टिकल डेंसिटी इफ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज जीरो ट्रांसमिटेंस वुड बी हंड्रेड परसेंट दैट वी नो इफ फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ द वेव लेंथ डजेंट मैच एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स डज नॉट वाइब्रेट देन नथिंग कैन बी एब्जॉर्ब सो हंड्रेड परसेंट ट्रांसमिटेंस विल बी देयर देन इफ द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज वन देन ट्रांसमिटेंस वुड बी फिफ्टी परसेंट एंड ऑप्टिकल डेंसिटी विल बी पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट सो वी कैन सी द रिलेशन इज एन इनवर्स लॉगरिजमिक रिलेशन टू द सैम्पल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन सो ऑप्टिकल डेंसिटी इज द हैज द इनवर्स लॉगरिजमिक relationship so now we have understand the beers lambert's law now we will see the instrument that is spectrophotometer spectrophotometers are the instruments that send electromagnetic radiation into the target and measure the resulting interaction of energy and the target now we can see that the lining diagram of a spectrophotometer this is the reference photo tube that is the line diagram of double beam spectrophotometer and this is the first reference photo tube not uh, this is the um, line diagram of basic spectroscopy so uh, reference photo tube is there now the light gate is there the lamp from where the light will be given to the sample now when this will enlighten the reference photo tube will sense the amount of light which is released by the lamp and this light is start traveling through the lens which will concentrate the light to pass it in a full concentration so that no amount of light will waste so this lens will target this light through entrance slit and uh, through concentrating the light and then objective lens will reflect this light by dispersing it through the diffraction grating now what does grating does grating has wavelength cam and it chooses the wavelength whatever wavelength is needed it only releases the light of that wavelength and here the light control oculator all the things to incidence the light on the sample which is in the tubet so if it would be a double beam that there will be the double incidence of light here and double uh, cubits will be here one cubit plus will be here as a blank sample now this is only light diagram the oculator will intense the light or pass the light or focus the light through the sample specific area of the sample then this light will be sensed by the filter and then measuring the photo tube and this will convert 
amplifier will convert the signal into the numbers now this is the whole basic working of an spectro photometer now this is the machine which is present in the lab lab your lab now this is the single beam spectro photometer which is available in our lab this is the sample con compartment it opens it's a flap it opens and there is a space to put the cuvet in it this is the wavelength control where you will set the wavelength and this is the power switch and zero control where you will calibrate that this transmittance is 100% of reference sample and the absorbance control where we, you will read the absorbance at particular wavelength. So, first for testing the sample select the wavelength using wavelength control with sample compartment empty and cover closed adjust zero control so that meter records zero or you can use what in food analysis we use the cubit with the solvent which is used to used in the sample to make it soluble the food sample so we will use whatever the distilled water or whatever is there which is used to make soluble or a homogeneous solution of a food sample which will be put into cuvette and it will be kept into the sample compartment and then the light will be passed so insert reference blank into the sample compartment and set absorb absorbance control to zero so first we we will check the control uh, in for other samples first empty compartment test will be there then nowadays we have spectrophotometers which only need the blank the insert reference sample step and then insert unknown sample into the sample compartment and read measurement from meter in percent transmittance or absorbance whatever you want you can select if you select the wavelength uh, transmittance then you will get the transmittance first uh, and if you select the absorbance you will know the absorbance so i think the spectrophotometry is clear and uh, you can make notes of it and if you have any query you, you can ask me in the google meets class or you can post it uh, into the comment section